Hello there, I'm LazyBeast, and I'm here to tell you how to go from dragon riding bad to dragon riding chad, so you can do less of this and more of this. Let's go. So how do you unlock your sexy dragon mounts? Well, you need to quest through the waking shores until you get to Alex Straza. You do a little dragon riding tutorial and then you're good to go. It's nice and straightforward. You unlock the rest of the mounts by completing your campaign. So you do have to do this on your main the first time that you level to 70. It's optional the second time round. It's likely a threads of fate type scenario, so you can skip the campaign. But the dragon mounts are account wide anyway, so you can log into your alts and just use these straight away once you've got them on your main. So you may be wondering, what the hell are these dragon riding glyphs? Well, these just basically unlock your skills to progress as a dragon rider. They make it easier to keep going, to go faster, and to complete the dragon riding races, for example. There are some special moves that are abilities that go on your dragon riding action bar when you mount up on any dragon riding mount, and you will unlock these when you unlock each of the different mounts through the campaign. I will be making a full guide on where you can get all of these, and it may already be up on the channel, so check the description for that if you're interested. You don't need to get all the glyphs as a priority like straight away, but you can if you want to. So you start off in the first zone and basically just follow it linearly. And I recommend doing that because some of the hardest glyphs to get that are really, really high up are in the later zone, the last zone, Thaldrassus. So if your dragon's a bit more powered up by then, you'll just make yourself have an easier time getting them. Now currently, you can apply these dragon riding glyph skill points from anywhere. This may change however because this was done in the beta, when you might just have to go to the trainer, which is located in the Waking Shore where you do the tutorial, and I believe there's also one in Valdraken, the main city in the Dragon Isles. It's quite a linear tree, but there are some points where you do have options, and the ones that I recommend that you try and get first are the ones that increase your Viga to give you an extra charge, and the ones that make your Viga recharge even faster when you're landed or when you're flying at high speeds. Go for those first, and you'll make your dragon riding easier overall. Now let's get into some actual flying tips. So the first one is go down to go up. Now you're probably thinking, what the hell does that even mean? So what I'm basically trying to say is, you gain momentum when you go down, and then you can use this momentum to go up and use your number two ability to gain a lot of height. You can do this multiple times, and as long as your wings are still glowing blue and you've got the trails coming off, you'll just keep going high, and you will also keep recharging vigor as you're climbing up. So it can be a mistake to immediately jump off the ground and immediately start ascending, especially if you're going to go for a massive climb. If you want to slow down, for example, maybe if you're looking for something, you're searching for a rare or you're not quite sure where you need to go, then just go up a little bit and you'll lose some momentum and you'll start going a bit slower and then it'll make it easier to land precisely where you need to go. Now, a big thing from the normal mounts that the Dragon Rider mounts differ in is that you cannot just stop completely in the air. You will just fall down. So if you do need to stop in a certain place, the best thing to do is just hold one direction and just circle around for a bit. You'll keep your momentum for quite a while, and it will take a while for you to fall completely to the ground. So you can hold this down for a good 30 seconds or so, depending on how high you are. It'll give you a little break in the air. If you do find yourself projectile vomiting up the walls because of dizziness, whoops. Another tip is to use ledges to your advantage, especially when you only have low vigor and when you've just got your dragon riding mount for the first time. It can be tempting to take off always using your number one ability, but it's easier sometimes and it can make you go a lot further if you just drop off the ledge and glide straight down for a bit and then gain momentum by going back up into the air, you can usually cover more distance. And do note as well that it is possible to fly indefinitely. If you do fly properly and try and plan ahead where you're going to go, where you're going to drop down to gain some momentum and pick back up, and don't spend too long in flatter areas, you can fly for as long as you possibly want to and stay in the air for ages. Now it's time to make your dragon look sexy. So how do you customise your dragons? Unfortunately, it's not like Grand Theft Auto where you just pop into the spray paint thing and you can lose your 5 star wanted level. It doesn't work like that. You need to unlock these pages, which basically come from loads of different sources. You basically go to what's called a Rostrum of Transformation. You can find one where you first get your dragon riding mounts and do the tutorial. There's also one in Valdraken in the main city, which you can ask a guard to give you directions to. And you basically just change and customise them, click accept, and off you go, looking sexy as hell. Yeah, boy. So, now that you're a dragon riding chad, you're going to want to show off your moves right and you can actually take people for a ride on your very own dragon so to enable passengers on your dragon you need to speak to one of the dragon trainers once done you can then let party members hop on board for a ride make sure that you've got a goblin glider or some form of soft fall ability then fly them up real high and then dismount in the air to kill them all this is of course completely optional after the first time that you've done this mandatorily go and wreak havoc also, being the best dragon rider to grace the skies is no easy title to maintain, and you're going to have challenges against your title, so what do you do? Well, if you see a member of the opposing faction trying to be as cool as you, you send their ass flying off the mount to the ground below, of course. 
If you use this ability here, you can whiz into someone, sending them flying off the mount, and then you can just revel in their tears as they fall to the floor. But do remember, you're not invincible, and they may try and do this to you. So I recommend always having some goblin gliders or the engineering cloak tinker on, just so you can glide down and at least save some of your dignity. Now, when it comes to dismounting and entering combat, you'll want to make sure you pick up the Dragon Rider's initiative trait and make sure that you land right on top of your enemy's head each time that you want to start a fight. Something I found a little clunky to begin with was actually dismounting and engaging in combat without just sitting there on your dragon looking like a derp. There's a couple of efficient ways that you can land and start combat straight away. You could just land on an enemy and begin auto attacking which will dismount you, or what you can do is drag some abilities onto your dragon riding bar and use them to start combat, preferably the ability that you would normally initiate combat with, but anything that's instant cast can work well. Or well, the third option is simply to just press your mount keybind. So one of the other interesting dragon riding abilities that you're going to want to try and make good use of is the bronze time lock ability. Now this seems to have a kind of unlimited range. So you can literally set this at one end of the Dragon Isles, fly all the way to the other, and then instantly teleport back to where you started. The first time you press this ability, you'll set your time lock point, which is where you'll get teleported back to, and the second time you press this will teleport you back instantly. You can use this while you're flying, but you need to remember that if you dismount, or after you use the return ability, your bronze time lock point will disappear, so you need to wait for the cooldown to finish before you can use this again. So unfortunately, you won't be able to set your point in Valdraken and then go and do your dailies or something in another zone and then mount up again and teleport back because as soon as you get off your mount, the time point is gone. So just bear that in mind. A really good use for this that I can imagine right now is if you are questing in a zone and you see a glyph somewhere in the distance but you want to get back to the quest hub, you could set your point, go on flying at the glyph and as soon as you've gone through the glyph, just teleport back immediately, save yourself quite a bit of time. Another hypothetical scenario of this is you could teleport people to the town for example, so you could set your point at Valdraken, fly down to the Waking Shores and collect your friend that's just entered the Dragon Isles, and then immediately teleport your friend with you to Valdraken. Potentially. I don't know if this works because I haven't tested it, but you know, it could be a thing, just use your own creativity. And as a final tip, if you find all these Dragon Riding effects a bit too much, you can turn them off in this option here in the accessibility settings. So guys, I hope these tips help you fulfil your dragon riding dreams and you feel like an accomplished rider at the end of this lesson. I hope these tips serve you well as you soar off into the skies of the Dragon Isles. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like on it and consider subscribing to the channel for more silly videos like this and guides for World of Warcraft. Thanks for watching guys, I've been LazyBeast and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.